Hello everyone, Kristen here. I wanted to address a question that came across my desk a couple days ago, and it has to do with triggers and reactions to triggers. And the question was, what happens or how do you handle when your person triggers you, which of course gives a reaction, and your reaction then triggers them, and now they have a reaction. So if you understand what I'm saying, there's two people who have now been triggered in the room. Both people are on fire and feeling some kind of way, and there's nobody that can really navigate the situation because both people have been thrown into their fear zone. So I wanted to start off by just briefly giving a definition, my definition of what an emotional trigger is. And that is an automatic response to a stimulus that mimics a past trauma. So the, the stimulus is something that comes across our way, do, 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 but it mimics something that feels familiar in us from a past trauma. And we have this automatic survival mechanism or fight, fight, or freeze mechanism that happens when this thing crosses our path and we react to this thing. So then what happens when our reaction to this thing, let's say our reaction is to fight, and our person has a childhood trauma or trauma in their life, um, a wound about people attacking them, and then now they're triggered into, let's say, running, which is abandonment. So now you're triggered in the abandonment. Do you see what I'm saying? This triggering just keeps going back and forth, and everybody's all up in their wounds. And the question was, what do you do in this situation? So I made a list of a couple things we can do, and it's super, the number one thing I want to tell you is if you know you're being triggered, you are on top of the game because that's the hardest part because it's such an automatic response. It's such a boom kind of response that happens inside of us. Like it's a, you know what I'm saying? You guys just like a, it's almost like throwing up where you just can't stop it. It just happens so fast. So, and a lot of people aren't aware of it. They aren't aware that they're in a triggered response because it feels natural because it just happens quickly. So if you are already recognizing that you are triggered by certain things that are happening around you with people, then you are on top of the game. And I want you to give yourself a huge pat on the back. Those of you who coach with me know that that's a big deal for me because you are lifting, you are filling your worthiness cup and lifting your self-worth when you do that. You got to say, good job, because a lot of people don't know. So you're that much ahead of everybody. So the first thing that we need to do is guess what? recognize we have to recognize that we're in a triggered response okay someone's touched something in us and we just freaked out and whatever we freak out looks for you fight flight or freeze you you uh you know blew up on this person you you ran away and abandoned them for three days i don't know whatever it looks like for you you realize that you had a triggered response recognize it again if you're doing that already who ray for you because that's awesome the second thing to do is to practice the pause, stop. I know I've been triggered right now. Now you're still gonna be feeling this junk. You're still gonna feel it. You're gonna be, you know, like to whatever just happened. But just stop for a minute. You know you've been triggered. You already know. Just stop, stop, stop. Whatever you're doing, just stop. Stop the runaway brain. Sit down, just sit with yourself for a minute and calm down. Just give yourself a second and start to calm yourself down, okay? Whatever it takes, deep breathing, laying down, telling your partner, I just need a minute to calm down. That's a great one, especially if you're someone that reacts really aggressively in a triggered response, which is, you know, that happens. That's what we do. If you act that way, just say, I just need a minute. I need to calm down. The next thing you can do, the fourth thing, is to ask yourself, what story am I telling myself about this person? Um, let's say your trigger is you don't matter. Okay, so the person does something and you immediately have this response of I don't matter and you start fighting to matter or trying to tell them how they, they need to make you matter, whatever it might be, however it looks for you. Let's say you have that Thing, ask yourself, is that true? Do I 100% know that that is true, that I don't matter to this person? You start questioning it and you're super honest with yourself, 
that's going to that's going to drop the bottom off of all that pressure right away because you start to know that it's not true. Now, the more you do this, the more you practice this, the more you're going to see that it starts to decrease. The duration of time that your that your emotional trigger happens is going to start to decrease and you're going to start noticing it quicker. Okay, which is going to lead me to the next thing, which is number five, communicate your trigger to your person. Talk about what triggers are. Look up the definition. Show this video with them. Sit down together and say, this is what I got going on. Can you, can you help me here? And remember, your person is with you because they love you. They love you. And if this is a person who is not a user, abuser, narcissist, you know, some sort of jerk, they're going to want to sit with you because they love you and they're going to want to fix this just as much as you do. So if you can put your shame aside, because it's kind of embarrassing sometimes and we're like, God, these reactions to stuff that I don't like, I don't enjoy. I'm hurting my person. This is terrible. There's no shame involved in this. You guys, there's nothing to be ashamed of. You are a human being and we get triggered. It's part of the human experience. You and everybody else, you're not alone. You're not exclusive to this trigger gig, okay? So sit down with your person and say, this is what's happening to me. I get triggered and I freak out, all right? So tell them and tell them what it means to you. Tell them whatever it is that's happening, you're not saying they're doing this on purpose, but whatever it is that's happening, you are having, once it goes through your brain, you're having a body response to that, whatever that might be, and say, this is what's happening in that time. So getting them fully aware of your triggered responses helps them to recognize when it's happening too. And I'll get why, get to why it's important that you both recognize what's happening. Um, so we're making the person aware of our trigger. And then we're going to discuss ways to stop the runaway train. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys a little story here in a minute about how this happened, what happened with uh, my husband and I with this situation. One was mine, one was his, because guess what? We're human, so we got triggers too. And, 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 and telling your partner what, you know, asking your partner if they're the trigger, say, what can I do to help you in this situation? Now, here's the answer to that, and it's really super easy. A trigger is a fear. <clears throat> You're fearing something. Find out what the underlying fear is. I'm afraid you're going to leave me. I'm afraid of, you know, whatever it might be. Find out that underlying fear. And then you can hold space for that person with that fear. So let me tell you a quick story. Uh, I'll tell you my trigger first. That, that might be a little better. Um, I pretty much healed most of my triggers, but I still had some trauma left over from my ex-husband, the husband right before this relationship, my second husband. And um, my now husband was on a trip, a little guy's trip. He never goes under guy's trips. This is a rare thing. He's not a drinker. He's not, you know, someone that goes to titty bars or any of those things. And he went up to a cabin with his, his friend who's um, a very upstanding moral guy, <clears throat> married, loves his wife and his family, just good guy. That they went up there to play poker. And... Um, I think we texted a couple of times today. At one point I texted him and he didn't respond. And this, this, I mean, it was like, you know, something took over my body. I literally, it scared me in a way that I can't even explain. And this had to do definitely hundred percent with my relationship right before this. And so the story turned out, well, no, then the electricity went out at the house. That same, you know, within 10 minutes of this happening, the electricity went out at the house. So now I'm calling him and trying to, you know, like, hey, this is going on and he's not responding. And I'm just flipping out because I don't matter. I've attracted the same type of guy. Oh my God, he's cheating on me. He's in jobless bars, you know, you name it. I had the story. I had the dialogue going on in my head. But yet there was a part of me, because I'd done a lot of my healing, that was aware enough to know that this was a trigger. And I was like, this is me. This is me. This is me. But maybe it's not me, but it is me. But maybe, you know, and I kind of did this. So what I needed from him, he called me finally. And he's like, hey, what's up? Sorry, I, was, I put my phone down. I went outside to build a fire, you know, at the cabin and um, left my phone in the house, forgot it. And everybody came out and joined me and I didn't get it, you know, didn't check my messages for like an hour. And I said that by then I had, you know, worked myself through it enough to be calm enough in it to say, you know what, I just, I just was triggered in something 
And this poor guy, I mean, he doesn't know the word trigger from boo, right? This is not what he did his whole life, you know, self-help and healing and spirituality. So we talked about it. He's like, well, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know if I was supposed to come home. I didn't know if I did it. And what I did was trigger him. So I had a problem. And what that said, his, his ex had left him because she said he wasn't there enough for her. So he's all of a sudden feeling all kinds of panic. Like I, I should leave here. I, I need to go. You know, so we were both in this state. Luckily it didn't get too big. Thank you, God. It didn't get too big. But afterwards, when we talked about it, I said, all I need you to say to me when I say I'm triggered, all I need you to say to me is, honey, I love you. Everything's okay. Everything's okay. I'm not leaving you. You're okay. I'm not Mike. I use his name. You know, you're okay. And that will calm me down. I said, that's what I need. And so that's what I'm saying to talk to your partner about. It's like, what is your phrase? What can they do? Now, when they're using this with you, again, you got to wake up, you got to be conscious and you have to know, okay, I can trust them. I can believe them. And the more you work through this, what's going to happen is your person, you are going to start decreasing the intensity of this wound until it doesn't happen anymore. Or if it does happen, it's just a little blip on the screen. I have to say, I still get them over things, but they're not, they're not even anything I discuss with him or anybody else because I'm able to go, I know what that is. And I just move on with my day because I've worked myself through it enough. So this is healable, you guys. It's a hundred percent healable. The other story that I wanted to tell you is that um, I can't remember exactly, but my ex had a trigger based on what was done to him in his previous relationship as well. It wasn't the one I was just saying. It was a different kind of trigger. And we talked through that trigger and we decided that his um, helpful phrase was going to be, you're safe, you're safe. And so when he started to be triggered in a moment, I would just grab his shoulder because I know because it, it was intense. It was like rah, about something. I would just grab his shoulder and I would say, you're safe. You're safe with me. You're safe with me. I'm not this person. You're safe with me. And just the touching of the shoulder, the physical contact, the warm body, the hand, and my words looking in his face, he would literally like, oh, okay. Like you could see him kind of come out of the stupor. So I just really want to thank you, big thank you to the person who asked me this question because it's an amazing, amazing question. And I want to leave you with one final thing, which is the spiritual piece in this, because there's always a spiritual piece to our healing. And the Course in Miracles says, whoever is more sane at the time, meaning more connected to God, more conscious, more in their higher self at the time, whoever is more sane at the time between a conflict between two people is their responsibility to try to stop what's happening or to, to bring some love or some some highness, some, some God into the equation. So sometimes that might be you. You might be the one that recognizes the trigger. You do whatever you can at the best of your ability at that time. The whole point is to get super conscious about what's happening. If we ignore it, it's going to build up. Nothing ignored ever gets healed, <clears throat> ever. It's like the wound festering. It doesn't get healed. Every time you bring it up to the surface, you bring it up to light, it is going to start healing until, like I said, it's gone or there's just little bits of it left. Okay, you guys? So remember, who's ever more sane at the moment, you or your partner? That's also a great conversation. In fact, invite him in. Sit down, listen to this video together because it's a, it's, it's a great topic and something that a lot of, a lot of couples, couples struggle with. And frankly, I feel like <clears throat> a lot of relationships could be saved if people really, really became conscious of what's going on inside of each other and understanding, oh, that, I'm so glad I said that. I'm, I'm so glad I'm blabbing here so that that came to me, was that when we can understand the pain in another person, we can understand their experience, we can understand what they went through and how that embedded inside of them, our understanding is gonna bring love to the situation. Now this does not put our person off the hook for healing it in themselves. We can't heal it for them. But our love is a much better energy to bring them to that situation than our trigger back 
or are freaking out or are saying, oh God, this again, you know, you need to figure that the hell out, you know, whatever it is that we're doing, that doesn't, that doesn't really work. Does that make sense? You guys like bringing love to it and understanding with clear boundaries. Cause I know people that have been triggered have been kind of awful. I've, I've had that happen to me where I'm like, what the frick is this? And so I, I bring love to it, but I also set a clear boundary around it. Another one last thing that you guys can do is that if your person is triggered and you're not, remain calm. Remain calm. This trigger is not about you. You did not create this trigger. This is about something in their past. It's a wound that they have. They were scarred at some point. Don't make it about you. Stay calm with clear boundaries. I'm not going to have you yelling at me. I'm more than happy to sit with this with you, but I can't have you screaming at me or whatever it is that they're doing. Or, okay, if you need to run away and abandon me right now, that's okay, but I'm going to expect a conversation when you come back. You know, if you're going to need to, because I'm, I'm saying abandon because that's what they're going to feel like they need to do is get out of the situation. Um, if you are going to remove yourself from the situation to get calm, I do want to discuss this after the fact, because guess what happens? Once everybody calms down, right? Once you get out of, you know, 10 octaves and you're, you're down a little lower, you know, you're more in the kind of calmer zone, you're able to have a productive conversation together. Don't ignore it and sweep it under the, sweep it under the rug just because everything has calmed down. That is the optimal time to sit down and talk it out. Find a path, tell them what's going on inside of you, hear what's going on inside of them. Talk about your triggers. Talk about your past wounds. It's going to require vulnerability, absolutely, because you're going to have to talk about some shit that happened to you. And sometimes that's hard for people, but hopefully it won't be hard for you. And and then talk about what what you guys can do, what the opposite person can do when you are triggered in your fear. All right, you guys. I really hope you got a lot from this today. I love you all. Much love. <laughs>